Hi folks, let's do some uh, shading experiments on some solar panels. I'm Roger from Off Grid and in this episode we are going to do a little bit of experimenting with uh, various shading scenarios on these two 185 watt uh, Victron solar panels. Uh, if I bring you around to the back then you can see how I've configured this. So we've got uh, these two panels connected in series at the moment. Uh, coming to a, a Victron uh, 100-30 controller and from here onto our battery here this is about 45 percent full at the moment so it's accepting a nice charge. I'm uh, connected to this at the moment as you can see we're pumping uh, 325 watts so that's all good and uh, we're about to try a few shading scenarios so if I just talk you through it uh, let's come back around to the front. So if I talk you through this uh, here we have two 185 watt panels. They, uh, well, if I step away, you can see they're completely in the sun. I want to look at some scenarios. So starting where we cover one panel in its entirety to see what the other panel does. And the bypass diode should take care of that, but let's see what it actually does produce. And then I want to take one of these panels and partially shade it. Uh, in particular, I want to shade, uh, you know, leave a little bit of space on the top, shade something and leave on the bottom. And uh, I think we're going to be surprised at the result of what that does to this particular panel. But let's see what it does to the string. And uh, when we finish that, let's put these in parallel and try that again and see what the result is. So let's go for it. As you can see, we're pumping about uh, 325 watts. The sun is nice and bright. I think we've got about half an hour of identical conditions without a cloud coming in the way. So to make the experiment more valid, I mean, it's not exactly scientific and a lot of folk I see who do these sort of comparisons will um, uh, put the uh, number of panels uh, up with uh, identical configurations to make it more valid. But I don't think the sun conditions will change at all. As you can see, it's hovering on 325, 326 consistently. So let's take this panel and we are going to completely shade it. We're going to use the box that the panel came in. So, total shade, and uh, we are down. Now that it's settled, bypass diodes have kicked in. And as you can see, if I just shift this over a little bit so that it's completely covering one panel but not the other, as you can see, we have settled down on 153 watts. So pretty much a bit less than half of what we were getting when they both are. So let's move this back out again. Let's see, so 153 to let it climb up. Slowly increasing again. I'm guessing it's going to stop at about 300 and something. Yep. So just a bit more than double, so 320 something, which is what we started with, 325-ish. So by completely shading one panel, the bypass, di the bypass diodes kick in and uh, we get pretty much half of that. Let's try it again, just to make sure we're not deceiving ourselves. It drops right down, as we can see. It then kicks back in and counts back up and we're back up to 100. 50 something, so just less than half of the uh, capacity of the panels. So that, uh, I know we've done a YouTube on this in the past, but that puts paid to the theory that if you shade one panel that you completely drop your your solar yield. Actually the bypass diodes kick in and um, as you can see we still get a reasonable yield. It takes a bit of time for it to recover, but it does, it takes a few seconds and then it does recover. So let's put this to a side. The, uh, the next thing, coming back up to 300 and something, the next thing I want to do is to pretty much show the effect of a, like a telegraph pole or a telephone pole or something. So let's see, we're on 320 something, 325, 26 as we were before. So let's hold this across there. You see we drop down quite radically. Let's wait for that to settle down. And as you can see, it's not settling down. And uh, I've got a theory, I'm not sure on this, I've got a theory that basically the smaller part of the panel that is still receiving the sun is the one that's actually 
it's, it's acting like a panel and the other one then goes to the same level. So if I bring that up there and we wait for a while, even that is not actually coming up to speed just yet. Let's just cover that like that. So if you have partial shading of one of the panels, it's actually quite bad news. And uh, the bypass diodes aren't really helping very much now because we're down to 26 watts. So you can see a single telephone pole or a telegraph pole is having quite a big effect. So if we put it like that, and we wait and see. Now it has gone up quite considerably. So very interesting thing, if you shade a whole, uh, if, let's call it a lateral row of cells, you have a massive drop in performance. You shade a whole lot uh, longitudinally, um, then uh, you still get a, quite a big drop from what it was, uh, but it is messing around at 2, 220 something, mostly jumping up and down a little bit. That's quite interesting. If we take this away, it should then bounce back up to takes a while to figure itself out and then in fact at the moment they pretty much all over the place there we are going back up and settled down on 325 to 327 again uh, let's put this on the bottom just to see I don't expect the results to vary uh, but there we have 50 something watts <clears throat> give it a moment to see if it'll stabilize and sort itself out, but no, it, I don't think it's going to. So in this particular case, if you have a, a pole casting shadow like that, you're going to lose a lot of yield. Let's try again with one, let's say the pole covers two lots of cells there. As you can see, we're back up to, we're pretty much uh, running on just one of the panels. Now, this panel is hardly producing anything and that's maybe affecting that, but you're 150 something. So a simple telegraph pole is having quite a big impact. We'd seen in a previous experiment with other panels, that if you cover pretty much exactly half of one of the panels, so let's do that, drops down quite radically, and it is not recovering. Well, it's recovering, okay, it's come up to 150 something. So you go from, by covering a quarter of the entire area, you drop the yield by more than half. So interesting. The other thing is if you've got it running like that, at an angle like that, what does that do? Well, it's still in about 150 something watts, pretty much the same. Now let's try as our last experiment. <coughs> We're gonna take a uh, branch, so let this come back up to speed. And uh, here we are. So typical tree shading part of one of the panel. And as you can see, the yield has dropped from 320 something to 119, 120. So a, a, a single little branch like this will re result in a very significant drop in yield, as you can see. So for the most part, uh, when we shade the entirety of one of the panels, the other one uh, still produces run about 150. And when we try all these different experiments, so if we shade part of this, I think what's happening is that this panel is dropping so badly that it then affects the other one as well. And uh, yep, so as we can see, two panels in series, if you shade the entire of one, entirety of one, you're okay, you're still getting half your yield. But if you have partial shadings, it depends on the orientation of the shading, obviously, therefore the orientation of the, the, the way that the pipe by, uh, bypass diodes have been set up. And different panels may, may vary, uh, but this is what we get with this particular panel. Right, what we're gonna do now is we're going to change this configuration to a parallel configuration and try this all over again. We place the two panels in parallel using these uh, standard MC4 splitters and uh, we are receiving, we are, I'm seeing exactly the same figures as before when they were in series. Right, folk, we're back and uh, we place these in parallel now. Uh, as you can see, we are harvesting about the same amount of solar within one or two watts as we were before. So let's uh, try the same experiment. 
I'm going to take this panel and uh, cover half, well, cover one of the panels. As you can see, we dropped down to 165, which is a little bit more than we received. We received 150 something when they were in series. Now we're receiving 165, and it's really steadied on 165. So that's a good thing. Uh, so if we take this away and try our telephone pole back up to 326, uh, again, if it's placed long ways like this, we 180 watts, which was more than we were receiving when we did the same when they were in series. We were sort of 150 something in series, I think. And if we run this across like that, let's hold it a bit better. So cover, we're 178, well, it's still 180, which is again, better than we had before. Let's try our branch again. And see what the branch does. So just move this about and you can see we're knocking about 200 and something whereas we went down to about 150, 160 as I recall. So interesting experiment. Uh, very clearly placing these two in parallel uh, results in a much much better solar yield than when they're in series. The, the theory behind the series has always been uh, firstly, that because of the higher voltage, it activates earlier in the day, especially in the winter, and uh, deactivates later in the day. But I don't think there's that big a difference. Uh, we'd like to try it sometime, but I don't think there's that much of a difference. But the, the idea behind uh, when you have several panels in series that your cable can be quite thin going down. Uh, as soon as you increase your amperage by placing the panels in parallel, then uh, your cable needs to be thicker uh, to carry the current going down. So, and that's why as a, as a default, we always, uh, almost always install the panels in series. But as we can see, uh, shady conditions, uh, the, uh, the parallel configuration is way, way more forgiving. Uh, is that really significant? Well, when we're traveling and out in the field, um, we, we tend to, uh, look for open spots that aren't shaded. Uh, if, if we go to a proper campsite, we'll always look for a place that isn't in the shade at all because we know that we need the solar yield. And even if it's a hot day, we still don't look for shade because solar, solar yield is so important to us. So it wouldn't actually make a difference to me personally in the way that we travel in our motorhome. But uh, for some folk that do tend to uh, look for shady spots, maybe it will have an impact. Uh, especially if you can have half the the, uh, the roof shaded, and uh, in in situations like uh, uh, cities and that where you have lots of uh, poles and things like that casting shadows, we can see that makes a very very significant difference. Just a single telephone pole uh, drops your yield quite radically, especially if it's uh, the wrong sort of the wrong way on the panel. So hopefully that's a benefit to you. Hopefully uh, that's been particularly useful bit of information you're always looking to expand in the future and and if you've run wires that are too thin and, and so often when we do an upgrade on somebody's motorhome they've used two and a half mil wires why i don't know everybody uses two and a half mil wires sometimes one and a half mil um, but the most common is two and a half mil and you quickly get to the point where if you want to add two or three panels of high capacity on the roof that those wires aren't going to cope so you're going to have to rerun them completely at you know time and labor and all that sort of stuff so hopefully that's useful and we'll see you in the next episode cheers